Welcome friends to yet another episode of Active Learning in Emergency Medicine. My name is Sajad Pathan and today I shall take you on a journey to learn about renal and genitourinary emergencies. This session is going to be slightly different to what we had been doing in our previous videos. Here we are going to approach this session in the single best answer format. As you all may be aware that the College of Emergency Medicine is moving from its previous short answer question format to the single best answer and this session was made to address that concern which many of us have like what would be the question uh, framework and how they are going to frame it. I'm sure the college must be working out on the regulations and sample questionnaire to be passed on to the examinees for the future. So without wasting further time let us jump into the question number one over here. Here what you see is a scenario stating 31 year old male is in the emergency department with complaints of worsening left testicular pain for the last six days. On examination, the chromastic reflex is present and pain is alleviated on lifting the testicles. What would be the best treatment option in this case? There are five options given over here. Surgical therapy, manual rotation of testicles, doxycycline 100 mg twice daily for 10 days and keftriaxone 250 mg intramuscular once diluted with lignocaine and genitic urinary clinic referral leofloxacin 500 mg per oral once a day for 7 days again doxycycline 100 mg orally twice a day for 10 days and keftriaxone 250 mg intramuscular diluted with water for injection and genitourinary clinic referral. If you look at the question over here, the question is stating two challenges over here. Firstly, it wants us to know the diagnosis and then the appropriate management step. So let us look at the explanation what we have come, come around over here with. The two diagnoses under consideration over here are epididymoocitis versus testicular torsion. If you guys have looked into the scenario, it says that the pain has been there for last six days. The pain of testicular torsion should not be lasting for that long and the patient should present early. However, there is a concept of torsion detorsion which, is, which could be possible. But further down, the question stem states that there is cremastic reflex present and when you elevate the testicle, the pain is relieved. That is friend's sign. Elevating of the affected testicle, relieving the pain is friend's sign. So cremastic reflex is present, friend's sign is present and uh, so our diagnosis goes more in favor of epididymoocitis. So option number one is absolutely not necessary. It doesn't need a surgical treatment at the moment. Now let us look at the difference between the organisms which lead to epidemiochitis or urethritis in the adults, young adults versus the elderly. The age of demarcation theoretically is 35. You should remember anybody less than 35 is sexually active and the organisms implicated are gonorrhea and chlamydia. Gonorrhea and chlamydia are treated with keftriaxone single dose and doxycycline for 10 days. There are two options given in the answers which says keftriaxone and doxycycline and gum clinic referral. But a point to be noted over here is keftriaxone when given intramuscularly is extremely painful and hence it is recommended that it should be dilate, diluted with lignocaine. So, the option C appears to be correct in this scenario. Let us move further ahead with question number two. A 69 year old male is in the department with suprapubic abdominal pain. He has not passed urine for the last 10 hours. He never had such a problem in the past and denies any fever, chills and vomiting. He's in severe agony. When you palpate his abdomen, you feel a dull note on percussion up to the level of the umbilicus. His observation suggests a heart rate of 110 per minute. The bladder scanner suggests a urine retention of 850 ml 
what is the next best step in the management of this patient? Options are emergent urology referral, give tamsulosin, paracetamol and a trial to urinate in a urinal, suprapubic drainage, urinary catheter placement and discharge with urology follow-up as an outpatient and AAA screening. The question classically shows that this patient is in urinary retention. However, anybody with abdominal pain above the age of 60 or 65 needs a AAA ultrasound screening. But that could be done on a, after you have addressed the major concern over here, which is urinary retention. So passing in a urinary catheter and planning for a discharge with urology follow-up as an outpatient would be the appropriate answer. Remember, AAA ultrasound for all patients above 60, 65 years of age is to be done for every patient who comes in with abdominal or back pain, hematuria and collapse. So the answer is placing a catheter and arranging a urology follow-up as an outpatient. Let us move to question number three. The question number three states, 71 year old male is in the ED with on and off bright red hematuria for the last three days. He has been to his GP who requested blood test and urinalysis. He had been previously healthy and is stable on examination. Physical examination is unremarkable. He quit smoking 10 years ago. He is freely voiding urine and gives a specimen. The urinalysis suggests pinkish red urine with 4 plus RBCs. AAA screen is negative. The lab tests are normal and urine test results in 400 RBCs per high power field. What is the next best step in the management of this patient? Outpatient follow-up in urology clinic in two weeks. Emergent CT, abdo and pelvis for renal stone study. Emergent ultrasound kidneys. Emergent CT, abdo and pelvis with contrast and admission urology admission for cystoscopy. Let us look at the explanation given. Look at his age. He is 71 year of age. Is he able to void freely? I think so he is able to void freely. Is he stable? Yes, he is stable. Any distress seen? No. A AAA ultrasound screen is done and that was negative. The blood tests were done by the GP and they are all come back normal. Urine RBCs are present. Can it be stones? It's unlikely for a patient of this age to have renal calculi. Does he need admission when everything else is stable? Will a CT or ultrasound done in the emergency department be useful now? If you have asked these questions, will it change your plan of management. I believe a painless hematuria in this age group is malignancy and the hint in the question scenario was he is a smoker. Renal cell carcinoma or bladder cancer cannot be excluded out. So the answer would be outpatient follow-up in urology clinic within two weeks. Let's move ahead with question number four. 61 year old female is brought from the waiting lounge after a hemodialysis session following a transient loss of consciousness while she was getting ready to go home. She is known to have diabetes, hypertension, chronic kidney disease and have been recently started on dialysis through an AV fistula. Her ECG is normal and the nurse is obtaining her observations now. What is the most likely complication of the ESRD treatment in this case? Options are Dialysis disequilibrium syndrome, air embolism, hypertension, hypotension, hyperkalemia. Let us look at the explanation now. Hypotension is always the most likely complication of hemodialysis. Hemodialysis does not result in hypertension except in certain cases like dialysis disequilibrium syndrome where nausea, vomiting and hypertension can hap happen in somebody who's been recently started on dialysis. But it's not that common. Post-dialysis hypokalemia has been implicated as a cause of mortality in some studies in conjunction with pre-dialysis hypokalemia. So the answer in this scenario is hypotension. 
and that has given rise to a transient collapse in her. Let us move to question number five. A 78 year old male is in the emergency department with complaints of feeling generally unwell. On examination, you find scratch marks all over his body and he looks very dry. His observations are heart rate of 111, blood pressure 110 by 54, respiratory rate is 19, saturating 93% on room air and a temperature which is normal. His lab suggests serum sodium levels of 151 millimoles and creatinine of 191 micromole per liter which is 2.1 milligram percentage. As per the KDIGO criteria for an AKI, which of the following is the least validated? Serum creatinine greater than 26 micromoles per liter in 48 hours. Serum creatinine greater than 1.5 folds in last 7 days. Urine output less than 0.5 ml per kg body weight per hour for 6 consecutive hours. Urine output less than 0.5 ml per kg per body weight per hour for 3 consecutive hours. Serum creatinine greater than 28 micromoles in 48 hours. As per the KDIGO criteria, there are three criteria by which we diagnose a patient to be in acute having an acute kidney injury. Number one is serum creatinine greater than 26 micromoles per liter in 48 hours, serum creatinine greater than 1.5 folds in seven days, and thirdly, urine output less than half ml per kg body weight per hour for six consecutive hours. So in the options, if you see, option number A, B and C are the components of the KDIGO criteria. Option D and E are not components of KDIGO criteria. The question clearly asks, as per the KDIGO criteria for an AKI, which of the following is the least validated? And out of the three, the answer is option number C, this has been least validated criteria of having urine output less than half ml per kg body weight per hour for six consecutive hours. The other way to look at it is, are you gonna keep the patient in the emergency department for six consecutive hours and then define AKI? So this has been the least validated criteria. Let us move forward and see the different causes of acute kidney injury. Acute kidney injury, could be broadly classified as pre-renal, renal and post-renal. Pre-renal AKI is basically shock. Any shock can lead to a pre-renal AKI, whether shock is due to hypovolemia, cardiogenic shock or any other kind of shock. Renal artery stenosis is another diagnosis which can lead to an AKI. Post-renal, it is obstruction to the flow of urine caused by bilateral renal calculi or benign prostatic hypertrophy. Renal causes can be broadly classified as glomerular, interstitial, tubular and vascular. Acute tubular necrosis is the most common one. It's caused by NSAIDs, aminoglycosides, contrast agents and rhabdomyolysis. Glomerular causes could be further classified as nephritic and nephrotic. Lastly, let us look at what are the clear indications for renal replacement therapy or hemodialysis. This can be learnt by the mnemonic A E I O U. Yes, these are the vowels acidosis, electrolytes, ingestions, overload, and uremia. If it, there is refractory acidosis, pH constantly staying less than 7.15 with correction, this needs dialysis. Refractory hyperkalemia greater than 6.5 needs dialysis. Ingestions such as alcohols, ethylene glycols, and metformin, aspirin, lithium, theophylline, these need to be dialyzed. In overload states, you need to dialyze them and if there is uremic pericarditis or encephalopathy, you need to dialyze these patients. That's all for renal and genitourinary emergencies. Do let me know if you like this pattern of videos or you want me to mix the questions along with the facts 
and then present the videos. I would request you to hit the subscribe button and like this video. Put in your comments on what next you want me to make the videos on so that I can start preparing for it. Till then, happy learning, stay safe, peace.